Um, another thing that we can do with the streaking colors, for example, I have this rust, uh, streaking rust effects, is to make the 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 streaking rust effects. For example, when we are making a, a chipping area, no, a lot of chips, and we made the rust. No, let's do one example. Okay, I will paint some chips. For example, uh, some of you have problems painting chipping? Yeah. Some of you? No. Okay, then in that case, go up uh, out of the <laughs> store and <laughs> come back tomorrow. <laughs> you must make your homework. Now, many, many people have problems with the chipping because the chipping have uh, uh, several um, problematics. For example, um, one of them is the shapes of the of the chip. You know, many people doesn't know how is the, the real shape of a chip. Some people paint the chips like clothes in the eye, you know, very rounded, and and other people paint um, a lot of chips, uh, all of them with the same size, like a small ant walking in the garden or something like that. Um, but really few people just go to the street, go to check a truck or any excavator and and see how the chips the chips and the scratches work no? that is the most easy way the other aspect that is uh, not easy is the product and tools that we use to do that we can make chips with a uh, chipping fluid for example that that product is helping a lot or we can paint the chips by brass the classic method or with a sponge, that is a, another recent uh, method, also developed by, by another guy in Spain. In Spain, we are very poor. We, are, we have a lot of corruption. We have many problems. But we have a lot of uh, good modelers all day <laughs> thinking about how to improve. It's the only thing that we can do, <laughs> and except to see soccer in the TV. Well, I like that noise of the when I am shaking the bottle because that contains a steering ball that helps to, to shake it better, the color. So let's paint here some chipping. Okay, when I paint chipping, I start always in the edges of my model just to avoid any, any problem. Always is more difficult um, to start painting the chipping in a central area than in the edges. And if you can, try to paint the chipping in high areas in the beginning, just to try your brush and see that it is working well. Miguel. Taking notes, can you just um, tell us the number of that ammo product? Like, uh, is it named chipping color or is it? Ah, yes, it's a chipping color. Okay. Uh, and you will tell me uh, why a chipping color? There are in the more different colors, yes, of course. For example, if our vehicle is aluminum, like a N113, um, the chipping must be painted in aluminum, of course. But most of the tanks. Uh, doesn't matter if modern or the Second World War, when the, when the paint came off and appeared the metal, the metal get a very dark color in a few days. So the, the, um, uh, the, the, the color of the metal in the tanks are not uh, shiny, it's not uh, pure metal or steel, because that gets rust uh, very fast in a few days and, and get a very dark color, something like this color. So this is why I decided to use that color like a standard chipping color. So it's just basically a dark brown? Yes, it's a very dark brown. Kind of a chocolate color. What? Chocolate. Yes, a kind of, but um, a little more orange than the chocolate. A little more. A more dark. But yes, you can use a similar color 
if that fit went in your model for example I, you can combine small scratches in different directions Not how I work uh, the chipping. I make small points in the beginning and I try to create a bigger shape. Of course, to do that in a, mo in a real model is easier, no? For example, here, let me show you. Okay, here you can see the chipping in that area. You can see small scratches, small dots in every places. For example, here. Or here in the edges, uh, here. Okay, this is 148 scale, so that is smaller. In 135 is uh, easier. Miguel, when do you, how do you determine when you want to have some primer showing through, or when you want just to? When? How do you determine what spots you like primer showing through with the scratch, or when you just want to scratch itself? Oh, sorry, I cannot understand you. Prime, sometimes you'll see a chip will have the dark color itself, but it'll have some lighter primer around it. Ah, you 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 mean um, layers can, of paint? Layers. Because you have the metal, you have the primer, you have yes. the paint. Yeah. You you are talking about that artistic thing about to make uh, about to um, to create a kind of volume in the chip mm -hmm. uh, by adding the. Right. Uh, I will show you now. Of course, if you are painting, I have an sun color right now, but I will do with white just to show you how to do it. Sometimes I, should, I do that, sometimes not, depending if I want to go fast. Eh? Uh, for example, try to imagine that uh, that white color, this one, is a light sand color, okay? Just, just imagine. What we must do is first, I will try to make it a uh, oversized, uh, a bit bigger than usually, just to show you uh, with m uh, more clear. What we will make first, one method is paint the chips in the light color, a little more bigger than than the the ones that you want finally. So try to imagine that this is my chip. You can paint the, um, the chips like a small islands and continents. Hmm. When you check a Google map, uh, and you have a good example with the Canada map, <laughs> that, I, <laughs> that is incredible. This is a good example of chipping, in fact. Okay, this is uh, supposed to be the light sand color, lighter than the base color. And now we can paint the chips just inside.
normally wait for the light color to dry. I'm assuming. What? You would wait for the light color to dry completely before doing this? Yes, yes, you might let it dry. Yeah. But they acrylic dry very very fast. Okay, this is a method. Paint first in light color and second the dark brown. Other method can be first paint the chipping in the dark brown. The brass is very important. Sometimes we spend 60, 70 bucks in a, in a model kit, another 25, 30 uh, bucks in, in metal trucks, photo aids, and everything. And when we want to buy a brass, we complain because hey, that costs $10, only a one brass with two pieces of <laughs> iron. Uh, and, uh, yes, that costs a lot because it's difficult to make a good brass. So invest in good tools one more time, more than in models. Because if you have good, uh, good tools, you will be able to make models faster and better. It's so easy, no secrets. You don't need to have special abilities in your hands. You need just good tools. Okay, now that my chipping is uh, done with the brown color, I will take the like one and what I will do is a kind of uh, small lines under the chip. You don't wear glasses yet. Yeah. Glasses. <laughs> because of all this fine work, I'm surprised you don't wear glasses. No, no, I, I have a big problem with my with my uh, with my eyes. Uh, usually, I cannot do that, but because my hand is uh, uh, have a lot of training, I can do it even watching the TV. Oh, this is why. <laughs> but but I have problem in my eyes. Trust me. No, and those chips are really big. When I paint my models, I try to reduce, especially when I work in 170 second. Oh yeah, really? You try chips on 70 second? Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm more accurate than those. When you reduce the, the size, you must be much more accurate, you, you must control much more. So it's something really difficult. A pity that it doesn't bring photos in my laptop. Well, as you can see, that method is uh, different than the other. I and you're doing them all underneath. Is there a reason for that? As opposed yes, to, to create the um, the light effect coming from the up, uh, from the uh, from the top. All of those effects are coming from the illustration. Those are illustration techniques. That's all, it's so easy. So, if, for example, when you take a beautiful Tamiya box and you check the, the illustration in the cover, if you observe with the tile, 
the Illustrator use the same techniques that I am using here in my model. Exactly the same. So why not to apply in our, in our three-dimensional models? The effect will be the same. It's something visual. We are cheating to the people. Okay, so this is, uh, for example, it's funny when someone asks me, eh, because uh, the modulation is not real, uh, it's not realistic, or this is not real because you exaggerate too much. Of course, nothing is real. Uh, our models are uh, fiction, are just plastic. It's not a metal. If someone believes that this is a real tank, it's not true. You are crazy or what? <laughs> so when the people talk about realism, about colors, oh my God. No, because it's not the exact color of this. Hey, come on. I can, I can give you one million explanations why the colors can be different for our eyes, because we are making an interpretation of the reality. If you want to make something real, go to the airfield and build your own plane, or construct your own tank. But don't make models, because modeling is interpretation of the reality. We use a filter, we observe something, and we interpret it in something smaller. That's all. And some people will see more dark, and other people more light. It's just an interpretation. So, so we, we don't need to be worried about if our color is correct or not, if we made this in that way or that one. It's just to cheat to the viewer like in that case. We are cheating. That is not a real chip. I am painting over the paint. The real chip is what we will do with the, with the chipping fluid. That will be a real chip, but this is not. Eh? But looks nice, it's attractive, so that is enough. Okay? So remember, we can paint the chips directly, like I very often do in my models, because that can be more than enough if we want something more realistic. We can use that method, painting first in a light color and painting the dark ones in the middle, in the center. And finally, we can uh, choose that option that first we will paint in the dark color and finally we will make the highlights only in the down areas. Okay? Uh, now could be a good moment to make the, the streaking rust. That also is very, very, very simple. Okay. If we, if we want to paint the, the streaking rust, we will do something similar that we made before with the streaking grind, but in that case, we will paint we will paint just uh, a line under some chips. Well, this this is maybe too thick brass. Anyway, I will try to make it uh, a bit exaggerated just uh, to show you in the screen. Okay, it's very important. to avoid overdo it and just do it in some chips, not in all of them. Try to be random. Don't do it in all of them. Okay, we can let dry a few seconds. And now we will blend the color in both sides of the line. First, in one side. This is another thing that you cannot do it at once. You must do it in two steps. Or even more. Okay, now we change the position of our model and we blend it we blend the other side of the 
of the lines. One more time, the color that we use is very important. I have seen in some model contests, some modelers doing that with a very red tone that looks like blood. And maybe they do that not because they choose the wrong color. <clears throat> maybe also because the light that they are using at home to paint models. Good point. Hmm? For example, when I came here, when I go to every places to make paint demonstration, I am very strictly with the with everything around. They can tell you <laughs> that I'm not there. Uh, but for example, I bring my own bulbs from Spain because I am not sure if in in the places where I go, I will find those uh, bulbs. I recommend you to use cold bulbs, cold light, not warm. Uh, try to avoid the reddish uh, um, bulbs in your home. Also, I don't recommend you to use neon. Neon? Uh, neon? Uh, yeah. uh, because the neon is a green light. It's green. It's not white. Those are more white. It's still, it's still warm, but uh, are more neutral. More like the, um, the light uh, outside in the saddle. Uh, on at least on bulbs that are sold around in here around Canada, there's a Kelvin, like the black body temperature on it. So uh -huh. the, the 5600 Kelvin bulbs are, are the daylight balanced ones. Okay. If it's the 2400 Kelvin bulbs, those are too yellow. If it's the hmm. 6000, that'll be too blue. Oh, yeah. So 5600? 50, 50, 56 is usually the one that you use. Yeah, is, is a good one for models. Very important eh, to know that. So when you're in store, you see 5600 Kelvin. Okay. Just make sure that all your bulbs are the same too. So if you've got a ceiling fixture. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and <coughs> gooseneck lamps, make sure that they're all the same temperature rating. What? This is very true. No, because uh, if, you are, if you are using a very warm light in your home, uh, that will affect to the color in your model. Then you bring your model to a model show and, and you see, oh my god, <laughs> better to avoid to enter my, my model in the contest. No? Well, have you seen how I made that uh, those effects? Well, hmm? Looks very natural. There you go. What was the purpose of doing it on either side first? Like you went down the one side and you flipped it over, you did the other side. What yes. To explain you that, I will make a bigger example, so you will understand very, very well. Now try to imagine that we have a microscope and we are making a big, something like that, okay? This is really big, right? And to show you the brown example, I will make here the same. To see what happened. I will make this one with my method, this one just blending everything at once. And you will see the difference. We must let dry just a bit. Okay. If we blend that uh, line with that brass at once, for example, doing this, what we, what we will obtain is a line with the same intensity in both sides and in the middle. Everything is uniform. If you observe a real rust in a wall, for example, where you can see a piece of iron inserted in the wall or in a white wall, for example, you will see that the line appear always more intense in the middle and softer in the sides, always. 
It's because the action of the water is so simple. So that is wrong. Even if it looks nice, it's wrong. The right way to make it like in the royal theme, and it's not because I say that, it's because if you go outside, you can uh, prove by yourself. Here, I blend one side. Okay. And now, the other side. Can you see the difference? This and this? This is like the real one. Of course, we must do that in very small size. And remember that here is oversized. Uh, uh, just to show you uh, that effect very clear, no? <coughs> but that must be the way. Okay, uh, some questions about those techniques, or we will move forward. Everything fine and clear? Okay. Well, 